Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 14th of May. Prime Minister Narendra Modi files nomination from Varanasi, seeks third straight term. People in POJK calls of protest march after demands met three killed in clashes. And Nepal PM Dehel inducts new health minister hours after former quits. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi filed his nomination from Northern Baranasi City on Tuesday as he seeks re-election for the lower house of parliament for a third straight term. Several union ministers along with leaders of the ruling coalition were present during the nomination of PM Modi from the constituency where he had won with a resounding majority in both the 2014 and 2019 general elections. The city will go to polls on June 1st, the last phase of the general election where the opposition Indi Alliance has pitched Congress UP chief Ajay Rai against the Prime Minister. However, reports suggest that PM is likely to hold on to the BJP bastion for another term. He is seeking a rare third straight term for the top office in a contest which pits his Bharatiya Janata Party against an alliance of more than two dozen opposition parties, including the main rival Congress. The gigantic six-week-long general election, which began in April, will conclude on June 1st with results slated for June 4th. Moving on. India on Monday signed a 10-year contract with Iran to develop and operate the key Iranian port of Chabahar as it seeks to strengthen relations with the Middle Eastern nation. The agreement was signed between Indian Ports Global Limited, IPGL and the Port and Maritime Organization of Iran under which the Indian entity will invest about 120 million US dollars while there will also be an additional 250 million US dollars in financing, bringing the contract's value to 370 million US dollars. In a statement, India's shipping minister Sabananda Sonawal said that following the agreement, Chabahar port's significance will go beyond its role as a mere conduit between India and Iran and will serve as a vital trade artery connecting India with Afghanistan and Central Asian countries. And as this uh, long term jo contract hone ke wajah se ab bhavishyat mein ye sirf Bharat aur Iran ka bich mein nahi rahega Afghanistan aur hamare CISS jo country hai aur ASEAN country hai uska saath bahut bada ek connectivity banega the United States responded to the agreement between India and Iran on Monday, saying Washington will continue to enforce sanctions on Tehran and want anyone considering business deals to be aware of the potential risks they are opening themselves up to and the potential risks of sanctions. New Delhi has been developing the port in Chabahar on Iran's southeastern coast along the Gulf of Oman as a way to transport goods to Iran, Afghanistan and Central Asian countries, bypassing the port of Karachi and Gwadar in its rival Pakistan. U.S. sanctions on Iran, however, slowed the port's development. And Pakistan Prime Minister's office has informed that the country will privatize all state-owned enterprises with the exception of strategic entities. The announcement came after Sharif headed a meeting on the privatization process of loss-making state enterprises according to a statement from his office. It came a day after the IMF mission opened talks in Islamabad for a new long-term extended fund facility following Pakistan's completion of a 3 billion US dollars standby arrangement last month. However, Pakistan's incarcerated founding chairman of PTI and former Prime Minister Imran Khan on Monday warned the government that countrywide protests 
would be launched if the government would further increase power and gas tariff. Pakistan's economy could not be stabilized unless the government is formed in accordance with the public mandate, Imran Khan said while talking to the media in Adiala jail. Pakistan is dealing with a high fiscal shortfall and while it has controlled its external account deficit through import control mechanisms. After violent clashes which resulted in the killing of four people, citizens in Pakistan-occupied Jammu and Kashmir have finally called off their protest march against inflation and unemployment after the Pakistan government approved a grant of 24 billion rupees to help meet their demand. A report. Nearly after four days of protesting over inflation and unemployment, people of Pakistan-occupied Jammu and Kashmir on Tuesday called off their protests after Pakistan government approved a grant of 24 billion rupees to help people meet most of their demands. At least four people were killed and over 100 were injured in the clashes between the citizens of POJK and Pakistan authorities. A statewide shutdown was observed on Tuesday to honor the people killed in the protests. के आवाम की ये मेहनत जो है वो रंग ले आई और आज हम एक बड़े अच्छे पैकेज से जो है वो आवाम को जो है वो दे रहे हैं वो पैकेज कि हमारा जो बिजली का हमारा एक तकाजा था पैदावारी लागत में बिजली का असूल और आटे की सब्सिडी और अश्रफिया की मरात अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह इन तीनों चीजों में हमने प्रॉपर वर्किंग करने के बाद नोटिफिकेशन हासिल कर ली है पाकिस्तान ओपोजिशन पीटीआई पार्टी हैज कंडेम द किलिंग एंड हैज डिमांडेड द प्रूफ इन द मैटर and said those responsible should be held accountable. People of POJK have long accused Pakistan government of neglecting their demands and for not paying heed to their needs. They say an assertive international intervention is the only way that the hapless people can be saved from imminent doom. After heavy floods in Afghanistan which killed nearly 300 people, farmers were left hopeless as the agricultural land was filled with flood sediments. The farmers said that the real challenge for them is now to decide what crop their family can grow to go forward in their life. Local authorities said that the relief efforts were being made to meet the needs of the affected population and called for international help, saying thousands of homes have been damaged and livestock washed away or killed. Eight groups have warned of damage to healthcare facilities and vital infrastructure such as water supply. Moving on. Bangladesh Foreign Minister Hassan Mahmood said on Monday that the country's development is not possible without good relations with India. Responding to a query on relations with India, Hassan said it is not possible for Dhaka to ensure peace and stability in Bangladesh if it doesn't have a cordial relation with its next-door neighbour. Criticizing the opposition, Bangladesh Nationalist Party over their call for a boycott of India products, Hassan said the campaign proved unsuccessful and if BNP comes up with this agenda again, it will be rejected by the people once more. India is Bangladesh's biggest trading partner overall, with Dhaka relying heavily on Indian imports for essential goods. However, in the past few months, Following the fourth consecutive re-election of Sheikh Hasina, who has good ties with New Delhi, an anti-India campaign had been simmering in the country, backed by the major opposition party, BNP. The campaign mirrors a similar campaign in the Maldives, where President Mohammad Muizu came to power, capitalizing on anti-India sentiments. And hours after Janta Samajbadi Party, Nepal pulled out from the Nepal ruling coalition and its chairman, Upendra Yadav, submitted his resignation. Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dehel inducted new ministers in cabinet from the splinter group of Yadav's party. In a ceremony on Monday, President Ram Chandra Podil 
administered oath of office to Pradeep Yadav and Hasina Khan, leaders of the breakaway faction Janta Samaj Badi Party. The splinter group was formed after leaders led by Ashok Rai split the Upendra Yadav led party and registered the faction with the same name with the Nepal's election commission. Yadav has called the registration as unconstitutional and has moved to the Supreme Court against the poll body's decision. According to a My Republica report, Yadav in his petition has challenged the registration and has sought an order to end the splinter status as federal parliament members. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.